All right. This on the plate here is the 1993 Chevrolet LT1 heads, the reverse flow coolant heads. A customer named Tom sent these to me a little while back. And what I'm going to do is make this head outperform even the LT4 or the Elder Brock head. We're going to do this by basically a total runner reshape and by putting the tubes in the heads. Okay. First thing that has to be done here is we determine the areas to be modified on Tom's LT1. Which in this case is going to be the tube installation here the reshape of the radius of the bowls here and here and of course widening of the bowls. Now keep in mind this head has got 194 and 150 valves in it. We're going to retain the stop valve size. Uh, we gain a lot by unshrouding the valves by doing this and I can make it plenty of efficient with what we got. Okay. Next part in the modification is going to be straightening out these combustion chambers. Okay, right here we got giant humps and crevices right in the way, hindering airflow. We're going to pull that back, level that right there, expand on this, reshape this area up here in the combustion chamber, and open it up somewhat right here. We will lose a cc or so of volume by doing it, but the airflow that we're going to increase by reshaping this combustion chamber will more than offset the minute loss of compression in the motor. And from there, of course, we'll just do with the tube installation right here. They've already been reamed for the half inch tube, so they just got to be honed and press fit. So the first modification will be performed with my straight finger. I'm going to come in here and pull back the combustion chamber. And that's done ever so slightly by pulling it to the ring. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. A little bit of oil on my hand. I always oil my gun at the beginning of the, of the process. But anyways, you can see, I'll go ahead, pull it back here. Then, like I said, begin on work on leveling this chamber. I just wanted to show you the tool that I use. And I'm laying this back at about a 15 degree angle to pull it in to give me space. I really wanted to enlarge these valves. I might go ahead and do it anyway, but... Anyway, that's the start point. Okay, now we're going to go in here with the ball and we're going to remove the center hump. There's a big bulge on the LT1 head that comes about 50 thousandths up right where the spark plug is. So I'm going to take And then just kind of roll it right around the spark plug.
it's going to do is take the machinist ridges out. By lowering that, it's going to enable me to go in here and blend and roll right off the edge of the hardened seat where there's nothing in the way so that it's kind of unshrouded. Okay? We'll go to the next step in a minute, which will probably be the um, blending of it with the stones and then the sand rolls. Okay, on the back side of this process and the chamber where the spark plug is, this head's got some real sharp protrusions right here and a step about 30 thousandths deep. And what we're wanting to do is pull it in. This is an egg. Pull that hump down. And then once we get it close to level, we're going to blend and roll it into the existing chamber. Now here's our part. We got a level. It's up on a hump. And it don't have to be perfectly level, just close. I might add that up until Chevrolet released the LT4, there is no doubt this is the best combustion chamber they ever made. It come more unshrouded and blended and laid back in the correct shape than any other combustion chamber that GM had made for the small block up till 1993 or 92 when they introduced these animals. Alright, so anyway... You see what I've done? I'm going to go ahead and level it, pull that down, do my swoops, pull it in, and then the last step will be using my uh, finger for a final blend before we stone it. Okay. Now that the chopping is done with that egg, the next thing we're going to do is our final blending with the finger. In these edges next to the valve, you can see the little separation. It's like a little bitty machinist ridge, like a valve job was done. And it leaves... Uh, very rough right here and you can actually feel it we have a saying um, in our profession uh, the, uh, the cutters or porters always have a saying ruffles have ridges uh, well what they're talking about is the waviness that the big cutters when it's doing it's chopping leave uh, if you go in here with a smooth cutter like this and you blend it over Not only because of the point that digs into the machinist ridge, blend them down, but this cutter also goes in here and it rolls real easily. The area that you just uh, ported with the big cutter and it takes the big choppy uh, ruffles have ridges way <laughs>
Now this just makes it a lot easier job now that I've done that little bit of blending for the stones to come in here and do their work and pull the finish in and then your final blending. This area right here was horrible. It was like a giant cliff that came up, had a ridge. That's going to number one cause detonation, number two interfere with flame travel. So this was a mod that there'll be some serious gains seen in. So anyway, now we'll go to the next step which will be the stones and I'll show you what we use and how we do that. Okay, now I've switched to this stone. This is known as a mounted point. It's a 50 grit rough stone. And I use welding splatter for MIG welders to dip it occasionally. But um, as you can see, the texture it leaves is absolutely beautiful. This is one I've just done. Let's go to one that I'm getting ready to do. Okay. Once again, the LT1 combustion chamber is really great. It is absolutely one of the better combustion chambers GM made. I favor it more than the Vortet because of this swoop for the intake. But let's take a glance at the stone here now. Here we go. Notice how I just roll over the hill. Now, unfortunately, you do have to do this with the valve out. Because if you try to do it with the valve, it does two things. Number one is that this will touch up against it. It prematurely wears the stone going from one material to the next. And the other, you need to be very careful because you don't want to hurt the seat of the head. But in order for you to get down in there, the seat has to be out or else the diameter of the valve will push it to the side and you'll have that ridge. Which getting rid of the ridge is the whole purpose of this anyway. On this particular head I might add. Long as the stone just barely kisses the top, it's okay because this is going to get a new valve job at three angles, so there's nothing to worry about. Better dip it in a splatter real quick. That keeps the aluminum from loading up on the 